Hello everyone and welcome back to Gardening with the Girls. This is Heather and I'm Rachel and today we will talk about planning what to grow. So Heather, since you are a specialist, how do you start your seeds indoor? I usually get, you could do old school. Um, when you're in kindergarten and the lower elementary schools, you can do like a foam cup, a styrofoam cup or like what I call the plastic Dixie cups or the party cups, whatever you want to call them. You can start them in there. Um, I do multiple seeds at a time for different parts of my garden. So what I do is get a seed starter that's about, excuse me, sorry, <laughs> this big, this deep. And then it also comes with a dome to give it that greenhouse effect. So the water can phase through and the plants can do their photosynthesis and get water that way after I do water. them. That's how I start mine. And I put it in front of a window or somewhere kind of warm so that we'll get a good start with, um, growth. That's what I do. Um, I personally don't do indoor starts. I do outdoor starts. So you have to, if you were to do it the way I do, you'd have to wait till it's warmer. You have to make sure it's frost is over. It's not going to come back. Otherwise the moisture won't hold in the soil as well. And it'll mm -hmm. be too cold for the plants to actually sprout and grow. Right. Um, and a tip for either starting indoor or outdoor, something you can do is put soil inside of an empty eggshell mm -hmm. and then put the seed inside. And when you plant it, that egg will break down and actually provide nutrients, especially calcium, for the plant to grow really strong. Um, but for starting outdoors, basically what I do is I just make sure that my ground is tilled. Um, depending on the plant, there's different depths at which you need to plant the seeds. So some are like two inches, some are about four. I just take the corner of a hoe and I rake it along the dirt and then just use my hand to check the depth. And then I'll just scatter seeds down the row, lightly bury them and give them a little bit of water day by day. And since it's outdoor, I don't need to worry as much about any sunlight because it's right there in my backyard where we'll get plenty. Um, there are other things you can do. In our last videos, we did mention some fertilizers. Mm -hmm. uh, like the, I believe it was phosphorus you want to put mm -hmm. in before you start your garden right. so that's broken down and ready to provide those mm -hmm. nutrients. Um, the one thing I will add to the planter or the starter that I do inside, <clears throat> it has what you would think of as a tray you would go and pick up at your local greenhouse, but it's also got a, um, it almost looks like the cardboard egg cartons and it's got those in there inside of that tray they all fit together real snug and has about this much between the bottom and the actual tray itself so when you plant stuff you fill that egg crate looking thing with dirt and then I take a pencil the end of a pencil unsharpened or just the end of the pencil that has the eraser on it I just poke a hole in each um I guess individual egg holder dividing part um I just do that and then I just drop my seed in and then just take my finger and um rake it over with my finger or you can use a pencil if you don't want to get dirty I don't mind it um and as time goes on you can actually those um things you plant in in your starter those are biodegradable so as time goes on the dirt will kind of um moisten and it'll be like cardboard it'll just break apart and break down um I just tear them all apart and bury that with it so it will biodegrade into that soil and um it'll um, help leach those um, nutrients out that you've already planted as a good starter as well and so our next topic would be purpose mm -hmm. what do you plan to excuse me what do you plan to plant based on purpose such as strawberries blueberries or mm -hmm. other fruits for jams um, some people use it to just make like strawberry shortcake, mm -hmm. different people use it for different things. I know some people will dry the fruits that they grow and put them into things like granola or just eat them as a healthy little snack. Um, you can also plant to can. And mm -hmm. what do you typically plan? What I do is I plant what I'm going to eat. Um, so my garden consists of tomatoes because even in the dead of summer, you get to that point where you're like, man, a good bowl of chili sounds really good. And there's nothing better than a fresh, fresh diced tomatoes, fresh tomatoes you've canned into the tomato juice because you're not going to get that flavor unless somebody has straight from farm to table gardening. Um, so I do tomatoes. I do things that I will use on a daily basis or at least once a week that my family will use. I don't plant things like 
we don't eat squash so I don't plant that I plant for my consumption and then maybe if I have extra I give out to people in my neighborhood and RB and I trade stuff back and forth so if I want some dill I'll trade her dill for parsley so in my garden I kind of do a jack of all trades mm -hmm. I do vegetables such as um, squash and zucchini I do fruits like strawberries and blueberries. Mm -hmm. I've been very fortunate to have my blueberry plants to actually do well. Usually they do better in cooler weather, like somewhere in Michigan. Um, and then I also do a lot of herbs and flowers. So in my garden, I grow things like oregano, thyme, dill, as she mm -hmm. mentioned earlier, and uh, rosemary. And it makes for really good recipes. Yes. I There's a huge difference between fresh oregano and dried oregano yep. that you get from the store. You use less of the fresh, but it adds just a wonderful explosion of flavor to all your dishes. It's a good fragrance as well. It's very oh, fragrant yeah. because you smell with your nose before you even taste with your mouth. Yeah. So that fresh is a huge difference. Fun fact, a little bit of science for you guys. <laughs> um, your taste is more reliant on your smell than your actual taste buds. So if anyone asks you which of your five senses you would rather lose, say your taste because in the end, your nose will do the tasting for you. Exactly. Due to your olfactory sense in your brain. Anywho, Yay. I also plant a lot of flowers. Mm -hmm. I have a rose bush and my favorite flower is snapdragon. So I have a ton of those. I just love how you pinch the little side. It's like a little dragon and it opens up its mouth. I think they're <laughs> really fun to have. I, I loved it as a kid and I still love it now. Mm -hmm. Um, I do it for a pop of color to attract like hummingbirds or bees to my garden, which are very helpful uh, pollinators. Mm -hmm. Um, which pollination is something we'll talk about in a later yes. video as it is extremely important for your gardens. So personally, I do a jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. I don't have a set purpose as consumption like Heather does, although it is kind of a nice benefit to my garden. Mm -hmm. I just prefer it for the aesthetic, have it look nice and pretty. Um, and that's not to say I don't have pretty flowers. Like I have my perennials and I have my annuals. My front right. part of my house is all annuals and a good chunk of perennials as well. Um, I do have snapdragons. I just kind of let mine go to seed every year and whatever does come up, I replant with fresh plants. But my garden, just my strictly garden garden is just strictly vegetables. And then my fun aesthetic plants like she has, I have them in separate beds so I don't get any intermingling and have to weed as much. She is much more organized. <laughs> and speaking of flowers, which is your excuse me, favorite flower to take care of in your front yard? My favorite flower, I do a lot, um, when we moved into our house, there was a lot of um, perennials that I have that come back every year. Um, and then my favorite all-time flower is the purple bearded iris. It is a highly fragrant and beautiful iris. It gets about 12 to 24 to 36 inches tall and they open up really pretty and they get the yellow beard part because on the inside of the petal when they open up kind of like this I can't really like that right through here it has kind of a yellow fuzz and it gives it that yellow beard look and when you open your windows on a nice day where it's not like sweltering hot but a good decent temperature day um, the smell is just intoxicating almost. Um, they're my favorite. They were my granny's starts and I was able to get some of those um, bulbs and starts from her um, after she was passing and through my mom. So those are my favorites and then I always do annuals to fill in that pop of color because perennials don't last all season. And if you're confused about the terms perennial and annuals, don't worry. Mm -hmm. It just means annuals Think of it like an annual business report. You do it once a year. Mm -hmm. Perennials, it comes back every year. So per, per, per annual, annual, per year. Mm -hmm. um, we will also go back to that topic in a later video yes. as well. But our next topic is soil. Every plant, as we mentioned in our previous video, or every yard, sorry, has a different kind of soil. And mm -hmm. I've actually brought one of the pamphlets that we mentioned earlier. This is on top of our seed catalog, mm -hmm. and inside, Miss Heather was very kind to provide a test of how you can see what soil you have. You'll just need a jar, some water, and some dirt from your yard, and this has a 
information of all the kinds of steps and then it will tell you based here on the images what your yard is mainly made up of and from there you can almost make a better decision of should I do a free range garden or should I do a container garden because mm -hmm. um, some soils like uh, silt, I think, is one that we have here, isn't as good as soils such as loam, and that will help you determine which would probably be better and more successful to grow your yard in. Um, for me, I don't have the best soil in my yard, so I just do box gardens. I use potting soil mm -hmm. mixed with some composting that will add more nutrients to my plants, so that way I don't have to worry about, you know, starting growing a plant and then just kind of dies yep and i'm the same way like i said in our previous video um i grow my garden tires and if i have the extra room i'll get more tires um i do like she does i do the pot i do the soil i add my soil to it i don't use the soil for my yard because it's it's almost like my soil is different in each part of my yard, which is insane, which I'm going to soil test it this year when the weather breaks and gets nice. But um, I do this potting soil. I do fertilizer and compost in my garden because I know I'll be guaranteed really good dirt and a good um, growth for my plants and stuff like that. And once you've determined how, what kind of soil you have and where you should go from there, your next step is to consider, excuse me, what garden you would like to do. Mm -hmm. As we discussed a little bit in our last video, there's two types. There's container gardens, which have a huge variety of how you can do them. And then there's traditional free range garden, which mm -hmm. would be just, you get a patch of your yard, you rototill it, and then you plant from there. Um, my main concern is that I have a relatively small yard and it's, for, in my opinion, a little bit more work to have a free range garden. So for me, because I have that small yard, I do container gardening and I think your reason is probably the same. Exactly. Um, another thing you should consider is how much do you want to grow? Uh, do you want a, if you have a larger family and you want to grow to basically provide so you have mm -hmm. to spend less in a grocery store then you would probably would be better off with a free range garden not to say mm -hmm. that box gardens cannot produce a lot correct but if you have a bigger family free range might be a bit easier and it's a great way to keep your kids busy with weeding yes especially if they do something they shouldn't yes that was one of my punishments if you did not go outside or you got in trouble in the summertime you go out to the garden you pick the rocks and you go pick weeds until Otherwise, mm -hmm. um, we have a very good mutual friend and employee that used to work here. Um, her family has a huge garden, huge garden, and they do it to keep down cost of the grocery, maintain freshness, mm -hmm. and they also do it for canning purposes. And they eat like pretty much straight from the garden, from garden to table is how they pretty much eat their stuff. Yeah. And it's so good. And another amazing thing is because they have such a large garden, mm -hmm. they're also friends with um, like-minded people who per are farm-to-table gardening. Mm -hmm. And so what they'll do is they have a huge network system of them trading. So mm -hmm. uh, this particular friend, many of you may know her, Rachel Hill. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes. Um, they grow a lot of cucumbers. and. Yep zucchini excuse me zucchini yep. and every year they have a ginormous abundance they make phenomenal zucchini cakes but a lot of times they'll trade me so i grow onions and um we'll trade so I'll, I'll give them maybe five or six onions and they'll give me about the same amount in mm -hmm. zucchinis and so that's something that would be really amazing that if you can get your friends into gardening you can make that great um net network. network thank you yep and you know just have a fresher diet, especially if you have a lot of health concerns. Mm -hmm. Eating healthy can really help you with that. They don't have um, sometimes GMOs and chemical residue from certain fertilizers that mm -hmm. you buy in grocery stores and things of the sort. And I think the best thing about that is like if you do it as a group, like I've always had been friends with farmers that, you know, they'll plant their feed corn, but they also do a few rows of sweet corn. And, you know, they'll sell for whatever a dozen. And that's, like, my favorite part of summer. That's when I know it's getting close to my birthday. It's getting close to the end of summer at the same time. Um, I always love doing the fresh sweet corn and snapping beans on the porch. And there's been many times we've gone to each other's houses and 
shucked corn and snap beans. <laughs> and it's really nice to have that fresh option because you can just literally just snap it, shuck it, and put it straight in for the boil or whatever and have fresh beans and fresh corn for supper that night. It's yeah. better than going to the store sometimes. Yeah. I One of my favorite childhood memories is my grandma would mm -hmm. trade with her farmer friends. Uh, she grew alfalfa, and mm -hmm. so they would give her sweet corn, and she would give them the alfalfa for their horses. Um, and we would all gather in her kitchen, and we'd chuck corn. Mm -hmm. And it was so naturally sweet that she wouldn't add salt to it. She wouldn't add any, like, sugars. Or sometimes people like their corn mm -hmm. spicy. I'm one of those people. Um <laughs> It was one of those few things that I enjoy, just fresh as is. It does mm -hmm. not need seasoning. And so that's just one of the many benefits is you don't really realize how good fresh food yeah. is until you grow it and try it. And Absolutely. it's one of the many benefits to having a garden. There are a ton, and hopefully we will give you more than enough to start your own garden through the series. Hopefully, yes, we really do. And like she said, we we just naturally started trading stuff in our own. Be like, hey, I'm making this Italian dish. Can I have some parts of it? Well, I would like to make breadsticks with garlic and dill. Can you give me some dill? We'll just trade back and forth. We go between our houses and just trade back and forth. And it's a great network if you can, like she said, get your friends into it. Yeah, plan what you can. They can plan what they can. And you just trade back and forth. Yeah, and something else that's really fun, in case any of you guys want to try craft and do flowers more than mm -hmm. vegetables um at the end of the season especially if like any of my flower plants are going to seed and dying um i'll pick off the petal and i'll actually use parchment paper and press them mm -hmm. and so i have about five bookmarks uh each from roses uh from different points in my life i have one from my sister's graduation one from my graduation and one from my grandma's funeral and then two just from this year, I got a rose plant that I absolutely <laughs> adored and I could not just miss this yeah. opportunity. It was a beautiful rose plant. It was white and red. So there are just so many benefits to gardening. Mm -hmm. And before we say goodbye, there are a couple of things that I would like to go over with you guys again. As we mentioned, we have a seed catalog here at the library. It's right by the front desk. And we have added some new things to we it. Have. Heather, would you like to... Introduce? <gasps> yes, so we have what Miss Julie put in last year. We have a couple varieties of um, peas. Um, we have, we still have the broccoli. We have some Brussels sprouts. We have um, a couple things of beans. Um, I'm tr I'm coming at a loss for everything because there's still a lot in there, but we wanted to give it a little bit more variety. It's not that Miss Julie didn't do great job. She did amazing. It was Absolutely. super popular last year, and because of that, I got that inspiration from her to continue this when she decided to leave, and um, I thought that was a good legacy to leave with us, um, and that's a good way I can honor Miss Julie is, you know, continue seeing that legacy, and it's something that she didn't even start. It was something started within um, our community. Um, I mean, this Sea Library was established in 2013 as dedicated, dedicated as a memorial, actually, to a lifeline gardener and Hagerstown resident, Sally Ash. I think I'm saying her name right. Sorry if I'm not. But um, that was something started in her memory and is just something that's kept on. And because of Miss Julie and me kind of helping her and learning a lot from her last year, um, I wanted to continue that for the memorial and Miss Julie. Um, this year we have added some flowers. I'm super pumped about. Um, we've added the standard marigolds. That's an old gardener strip to keep pests out. Um, I added, um, we actually kind of went through the catalogs together. Um, we used Burpee, Johnny's, um, most of the time, most, of, all the seeds I got for this year were from Burpee's. Um, Johnny's was kind of hard to get into because of COVID and a lot of the businesses wanting to get into seeds and whatnot. Um, I got carnations, which are perennial, so you won't have to plant again unless you have an issue this year, um, which I'm so excited about. I'm going to take some of those home. Um, we got lemongrass, which is great for teas. It is a great... Um, mosquito and natural repellent with that you just kind of rub on the leaf or kind of smack it together and it releases a citrus scent that the mosquitoes and biting bugs don't like so they'll leave you alone and it's a perennial and it grows as a big 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 shrub of grass um, it can be overwhelming but it's totally worth it 
Um, we added some herbs. We got basil, thyme. Um, I got some more vegetables. We did everything you would need for salsa or pico de gallo, whatever you prefer. Um, we did tom we're doing tomatoes, sweet peppers, California wonder peppers. Um, we did cilantro. Um, we've got some chives. We've got everything you could probably need for your pico or your salsa. Um, mm -hmm. What am I leaving out? Uh, we have two different breeds of sunflowers, yes. which is very exciting. And we also have, I do believe, we will be getting carrots. Yes, we have carrots. Which are very fun. I personally love growing kaleidoscope carrots just because I like a pop of color. And Explain those. Kaleidoscope carrots? Yes. So basically, um, depending on the seed, it's all based on the DNA of the seed. Um, in the DNA is encoded for certain pigments mm -hmm. to grow into the colors. Carrot. Sorry, colors. <laughs> um, and so randomly it will grow. That pigment will be in the DNA just based off of breeding and history. And then they randomly throw these seeds in. And so you can have white carrots, orange carrots, purple. Blue, and, yeah. Yeah, blue. I had one purple carrot last year, two orange, and one yellow, <laughs> which was really exciting. And they were fantastic. Although in our area, they are a tad tricky to grow, but there mm -hmm. are a couple of um, tips and tricks that we can talk about later. Yep. And one more thing, on top of the seed catalog for anyone who can come in next week or would like to, we have a pamphlet that contains information about all sorts of different container gardenings gardens, excuse me, <laughs> if this is the route that you want to take. Mm -hmm. There is ones that are just in tubs, tires, anything you can imagine. They're all here. There's mm -hmm. plenty of info about them. And if you have questions, we are more than happy to answer them. Pretty much one yes. of us is always here. Yes. And if one of us isn't, Jennifer Taylor, as many of you know, our children's librarian, is a wonderful gardener herself. And so is Janelle Richards, mm -hmm. our children's librarian. Karen Steffel is also skilled in the gardening area. She is, very much. So pretty much you have an entire library staff of garden experts, yeah. or somewhat. Yeah. So hopefully you guys can come in as soon as the snow melts away and we can get spring started, and so are your gardens. Thank you yeah. guys for joining us. Thanks. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye, guys.